Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with a fun yarn dyeing experiment. Today we are going to test whether adding heat to 100% wool yarn dyed with a tie-dye kit will help intensify the color and potentially reduce the amount of time that you let the, the dye sit on the yarn. I have dyed 100% yarn with some of these tulip tie-dye kits in the past and we've gotten some really intense colors. But I usually let the yarn sit in the dye for around 20, you know, overnight or 24 hours before I rinse out the excess dye. And I've gotten a lot of questions about if instead of leaving it at room temperature, if I were to steam the yarn first, would that make things happen faster? I plan to hand paint these three skeins of yarns in the exact same design. But then the way that we treat them after they have been dyed is going to be a little different. I am going to wrap up and steam two of the skeins of yarn in my dedicated dye steamer pot. Um, and then one of them we will let cool and then as soon as the yarn is cool we will wash out the excess dye. One of them I will let sit overnight and then one of the one that has not been treated with heat I will also let sit overnight. So that way we can look at you know, does heating it make a difference in the color intensity? And also, if you heat the yarn, do you need to set it overnight? Now, there is another control I could have added here. I could have dyed a fourth skein, not heated it, and washed right away. But um, maybe if I decide to replicate this experiment, I would add that control. But for now, we are going to look at three skeins of yarn. I am going to mix the five colors of dye we will use today off camera um, and in the meantime I am going to pre-soak this wool yarn in just some plain tap water so that way the fibers will be wet and we can apply the dye with ease. I placed, after pre-soaking the yarn for at least half an hour, I placed the yarn through a salad spinner to remove as much of the excess water as possible so it can hold as much of the dye as possible. I just mixed these, the tulip dye, according to the instructions. After we dye the yarn, we are going to let the dye set in three different ways. I have marked um, the ties of some of the yarns with ribbons, so I have a tie on, a ribbon on both ties on one skein, a ribbon on one tie, and then a ribbon, no ribbons on the ties, so that way we can differentiate between the skeins of yarn. And now, I guess, oh, so while I used the salad spinner to uh, remove water from this dye, from this point forward, all of the tools and equipment that I will be using are dedica dedicated dye pots, spoons, etc. And so they're not um, equipment or tools that I use for food. Now we are going to start applying the dye to our yarn. I will eventually start massaging the colors in, but I'm starting with just sort of a quick... I sometimes like to start my hand painting with sort of a rough sense of where I want the colors to go. But applying the dye with the squeeze bottle and this back and forth method also is helping us evenly apply these colors to our yarn. I know from some past experience that the blue sort of breaks into like a purple, um, so I'm kind of excited to <laughs> to see how that turns out. The reason why I decided to do this experiment stemmed from some questions that I got um, in one of the last, last experiments I did when people started asking me would heat make a difference when it came to dyeing yarn with these tulip tie-dye kits. And honestly, I didn't know. The instructions do not say to use heat. So, you know, it didn't really even occur to me to try it. You can see I'm sort of squishing 
the color down, but I will probably need to flip these over and add some color to the reverse side because there is not um, a lot of liquid in here, which means that the colors aren't going super far, but that's not a huge problem for me. And so some people wondered if heat would help with the color absorption in our yarn. And so honestly, I really didn't know. Um, it's certainly possible that it could make a difference, but yeah, we'll definitely need to flip these over. It's certainly possible that it could make a difference and that adding heat might help the dye set quicker, but heat is not something that is in the instructions on these tie-dye kits. But the other thing to be noted is that wool is also no longer on the instructions for these tie-dye kits. Um, the first time I used tulip tie-dye kits, I was working with a knitting website and they asked me to do some knitting tie-dyeing. And I thought, you know, that sounds fun. Let's give it a shot. Um, and I believe that that first kit I had indicated that you could use the tie-dye kits on wool. So I gave it a shot and I got some really, really nice colors when I tie-dyed a pre-knit blank that was 100% wool. Um, but since then, the kits now say that you can use them on silk, you can use them on, I think they say rayon and cotton, but they no longer indicate that you should use them on wool. So this is a non-indicated use of these dyes but we get some really pretty colors, so I like doing it. What's interesting right now is these ties, I don't know what these ribbons are made out of, I should check, because the ribbon seems to be absorbing a lot of dye, which I think is pretty cool. But anyway, all right, we've got some reasonable application along one side, but I'm now going to flip each of these so that way we can make sure we get dye all over. And I have protected my counter here with some plastic wrap um, so that way we do not dye my work surface. But I might actually spread these out a little further for this next round. But you can see that although the penetration isn't great, it wasn't horrible either. So. That is good. But it's always worth paying attention to how good of a color penetration you have so that way you can sort of keep some dye in reserve as you are dyeing your yarn. I mean, if you don't mind having some white sections, then it's not a big deal. But if you want to minimize the amount of white you see on your yarn, then you will want to pay attention. To do. But the main thing we're hoping to see today, and honestly, maybe we won't see much of a difference at all, but we're curious to see if, you know, a lot of dye rinses out um, when we have to wash the yarns in the end. And so one of the things we're really curious to see is if we add heat, does that mean that we absorb more of the dye to our yarn? and therefore less, you know, less washes out. And that's something where, honestly, I have no idea if it will make a difference. I, th I think that if heat were a variable that would make a difference in the way that color is absorbed to the yarn, then it would be something that is recommended in the instructions versus, you know, not being mentioned at all, so. But, it's amazing. I don't think I've dyed yarn that, with tie-dye that I've put through the salad spinner first. So you can see just like how like the dyes are not traveling very, very far on the yarn. Um, even as, I, okay, so if I squeeze it like this, then it moves. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. Just needs a little more massaging. 
because if I squeeze it that way, you can see some start to come out. Now, I am wearing gloves, so that way I do not turn my skin these beautiful blue and purple, black and teal colors. Because for all, these are my favorite colors. I would prefer to not have blue hands later tonight. <laughs> But again, it is all a matter of preference. Um, I think that the, the stripey look that we get from not squeezing the fiber is also very pretty and cool. So that's something that um, you totally could just leave as is and would be gorgeous, actually. I always love the look of the paper towels that I use to wipe my hands with from these tie dyeing projects. And in fact, I think that I might try to dye some silk with these kits next, just because I have some inexpensive silk scarves. And I think that it could be a fun way to clean up the work surface. So we will yarn has now been successfully hand painted and now I just need to start prepping this so we can wrap them up to either heat or let them set. In order to wrap up these yarns I'm sort of going to move them back and lay out some additional plastic wrap to wrap each one up individually. I have pushed all the yarns back so I can wrap them up one at a time. So for each one, I'm gonna lay just a piece of plastic wrap on top of our protected work surface. Lay the yarn on top, and then wrap it up. Like so. Now, once I wrap it up, I will place each skein of yarn into a Ziploc plastic bag which I will close up uh, in a moment. And so I'm just gonna repeat this for the other two skeins. I now have three Ziploc bags filled with yarn. I've got one that says heat, one that says heat overnight, and then one that's unlabeled, which is just gonna sit overnight. I don't know yet which ties apply to which fiber, but um, when I unwrap it, I will pay close attention to where the ties are so that way we can tell them apart. I just added the two heat Ziploc baggies into my dye pot, and I am gonna let them steam for 20 minutes. 20 minutes have passed, so I'm now gonna turn off the heat and remove the top of our dye pot. I'm also going to remove, using my dedicated dye tongs, these two sets of yarn that we put in to heat for these 20 minutes. Now we need both of these yarns to cool so that way I can wash them. Um, they are very, I mean I can touch it, but they are both very warm right now and I don't want to try rinsing 100% wool while it's still hot. 
So I will check back periodically to see um, when they are ready to A, take one of them upstairs and B, rinse one out. It has been a half hour since I removed the yarn from the heat. And it's certainly significantly cooler than it was, but it is by no means cold yet. But I do want to unravel the yarn to help it cool a bit more so that way I can start rinsing out the fiber. And the reason why you can see some steam coming off of the center. The reason why I want to do this is that I don't want to wait four hours or so to let the yarn cool off for me to start rinsing it because then I'm starting to approach the recommended wait times for this. So I'm hoping, and now it's been maybe about an hour or so since we added the, uh, the dye to the yarn, I'm hoping to start rinse it in maybe 10 minutes or so so then we can see how much color comes out of this yarn that we added some heat to. All right, the yarn is now cool, so I can start adding some water to it. And look at all that color coming out. Now, I mean, it doesn't look like 100% of the color is coming out, but a lot of color is here. Now, I mean, this is what we expect from when we tie-dye anything anyway. But, wowza. <laughs> One thing to know it's going to happen, another thing to see it. Oh, look. So I found the water over the color. You can see, look, at, we've got a pale, paler green. Uh, these colors are actually quite, quite pretty, but the... The black doesn't really even resemble a black anymore. It's more of a brown. Once the, the water is not quite as dark, that's when I will start adding some soap to this. Maybe I really should have done the non-heat control here. It would have been kind of nice to see how much color is in here versus one that I didn't heat. But, you know, depending on these results, maybe we'll try that again another time. I mean, overall, a lot of color is coming out, but this is still pretty good for having um, only been with the dye for you know, a little over an hour, and then, of course, with, with some heat. I'm now going to start using some clear dish soap to wash the yarn to help as much of the unbound dye come out as possible. This will involve a lot of rinse steps, but already you can see that the um, amount of color that is coming out has been greatly reduced. But I am going to let this fill up and leave it and soak in the water and change it periodically until we rinse out of as much of the dye as I can. And then I will hang up the yarn to dry. I'm about to go hang up this yarn to dry, and the first thing I want to point out is that there is still a lot of color in here. After, you know, I would say that the yarn has been in contact with the tie-dye for just over an hour, two hours tops. This yarn has one polyester ribbon tie on it. What's interesting, and I don't know what the fiber content is of these ties, but the ties took up a lot of color in this time and are significantly darker than the rest of the yarn. But anyway, I'm gonna go hang this up to dry and tomorrow we will come back and wash our other yarns. It has been about 24 hours since we applied the dye to our yarns and it is now time to unwrap them and rinse out the excess dye. Now right now I am opening up 
the yarn that we heated and then left overnight to allow the dye to set. And this skein of yarn, I just saw, does have two ties on it. So that way, in the end, we can find it. Now, I decided that, because I really want to see how these compare, at the same time, I am going to rinse the yarn with no ties, and that is the yarn that we hand painted and let sit overnight. So you can see right away from when I turned on the water that some color is rinsing out of this yarn. Especially in that teal section, and ooh, the blue is kind of rinsing into a purple. Yeah. You know, it's funny, I've definitely had decent results from the, these yarns with 100% wool in the past. Okay, and the, seems like the color is also rinsing out of our, uh, the one that we, I think this is the one that we, yeah, the one that we heated. Whoa, look at the color, the black is turning. Since we have two skeins of yarn here, we will have a fair amount more rinsing. You can see that our color is still really, really dark. But right off the bat, I'm not sure how much darker these are from one another, or if we really are seeing a huge difference between these colors that we're seeing here and what we saw after you know, just about an hour. All right, I'm now gonna start adding some soap. There's an amount of soap and I'm gonna keep rinsing these yarns to try to remove as much of the color as possible. I will say that I don't, it doesn't look like heat necessarily made a huge difference, but there might be a subtle difference between these yarns. I'm curious though to see how these compare to the one that I washed right away and whether or not it actually made a difference that we let these sit overnight. Once again, it was the old instructions from Tulip from, you know, five years ago that suggested that this could be used on wool in addition to cotton. But clearly, I think that you will get the best results if you use um, this type of dye on the, the fiber types that are recommended in the, the booklet. Here are the three wool yarns that we dyed with the Tulip One Step Tie-Dye Kit. In this first skein, we heated the yarn um, in a steamer basket and then washed it as soon as the yarn had cooled. In the second skein, we heated it for the exact same amount of time as the first one, and then let the, the dye sit on the fiber overnight. And then in the last skein of yarn, we applied the dye to the fiber and then immediately put it in a bag to sit overnight and didn't apply any heat. And well, the results are honestly a little underwhelming when it comes to the differences here. Now there's not no difference, but the differences don't necessarily make a ton of sense <laughs> because the difference, I mean, in some cases, the colors are deeper in the yarn that we washed sooner than the one that where we let the dye sit for longer. It does look like that adding heat to the dyed yarns allows the definition between the colors to be a little sharper. In the skein where we had no heat at all, you don't even really see much of the pale blue anymore. The purple has kind of overtaken it. And we do know that this blue is one that splits um, from blue to purple. So, you know, it's not really surprising. But even if you look at the, the change between the pink and the purple in the ones where we applied heat versus no heat, the, ed the color transitions see feel a bit more blended in this last skein. So the presence of the blue is the really the biggest difference between these yarns that had the heat and the one without. There are some sections where we have brighter color, 
like say here with the blue, here with the purple, and a couple spots with the pink. I don't think the differences between the two heated skeins is really that extreme because, you know, I see some darker green here, but it's also present in the yarn that was not exposed to the dye for as long. So these are feeling really equivalent. But again, I think it's that adding the heat allowed some of the dyes to strike to the fibers much faster, which which gives us more variation of color versus a more consistent color that we see in the wool with the skein that received no heat treatment at all. Now, as we're looking at these, the missing, missing control is glaring. I mentioned at the beginning that, oh, maybe I should do a apply the dye and then add no heat and rinse it as soon as I rinse the first heated one. And that would have been a really nice control to see because it's possible that adding heat allows this process to speed up. So if you heat up the yarn, it's okay if it's only the dye is only on the fiber for an hour or two versus the six to eight that are recommended because maybe yarn in the dye for only an hour or two without heat would have resulted in a paler color. But if the color from the yarn that was soaked overnight versus the one that only had to dye for a couple hours, if there's a difference, it's really, really subtle and kind of hard to tell. I want to make sure to add that these yarns are still super beautiful. When I say that the results are underwhelming, it's because I was hoping for a drastic, vibrant difference between some of these setups. And the differences are really subtle. The one bummer is that the black tulip tie-dye came out as a brown. I wish that we got something that felt a lot more like black, but overall, these colors are still absolutely beautiful. And it's not just the black that looks different. The tones of the blue and the teal and the purple are different as well. Here you can see what I was saying, how the blue breaks into this purple and a bit of blue. And so since there's purple within that blue, that might be why we're not seeing as much over here. But looking at the shirt that was dyed actually the same day as these yarns, you can see how much more vibrant the black was. The pink is actually the one color that came out pretty close to what we see on the cotton as well. So I think it might be interesting to see a little bit more about what colors of the tulip tie-dyes work best on wool versus cotton. I mean, they're all designed to work well on cotton. Please tell me what you think about this dyeing project in the video comments. I always enjoy hearing your opinions. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this experiment, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you can be notified when I release a new live stream or a new episode of Dye Pot Weekly. Thank you so much for watching.